All right, so if you have any inflatable pumpkins or Halloween decorations out in the front yard, hopefully you tied those down and secured them a little bit today, because if not, they were probably tossed around just a little bit. We had breezy conditions in store across South Central Texas to kick off those weekend plans. Peak wind gusts today, officially in San Antonio, clocked in at 29 miles per hour. Over in Del Rio, a peak wind gust of 22 miles per hour. In New Braunfels, just up I 35 35 mile per hour wind gust was the peak out that way and it is still a little breezy out there late this Saturday night. We do have some wind gusts up to 20 to 25 miles per hour still out there in from the south. That is going to be the theme through the overnight hours and into our Sunday as well. 25 to 30 miles per hour certainly possible and because we still do have dry vegetation in place across the vast majority majority of our area. Texas A&M Forest Service has placed areas north and east of the San Antonio Metro in a high to even very high fire danger concern. So probably just a good idea to avoid outdoor burning as we head into the back half of the weekend's plans. Remember, we do still have burn bans in place across the majority of the region as well. But something else that that healthy south breeze is doing and will continue to do through through the overnight hours is pump in more humidity. I think tomorrow you're probably going to notice that just a little bit more and also like this morning in spots we are looking to find some additional cloud cover develop as well. Temperatures start off a little bit warmer because of that also in the 60s for the majority of South Central Texas. We'll see those temperatures warm of course through the morning hours. We're near about 80 by any lunchtime plans and then as we head into the back half of the day through the afternoon hours. Those temperatures continue to climb a forecast high around 86 degrees here in San Antonio. Now I think this is slightly overdone here, but notice on your future cast we do have the potential to pick up on a few showers, especially west of the San Antonio area up in the hill country and stretching over to the Rio Grande. Overall, we'll call it about a 10 to 20% chance. Not a bad idea though to keep your case at weather authority at hand just to be on the safe side. Coverage is expected to be a little limited out that way still, but that could change into our Monday. We are expecting a slightly better chance for some scattered showers, a couple of downpours, and then another round is possible through the overnight hours on Monday as we see our next cool front make its way into our area. So here's the setup. We see that boundary approach from the north and the west. Remember, we've got plenty of Gulf moisture in place as well. There's also an area of low pressure in the upper levels of the atmosphere that's going to be adding some additional energy into our atmosphere as well. And then we see some upper level moisture stream in from what is now Hurricane Rosalyn in the eastern Pacific tonight. Powerful category four storm. This the latest in from the National Hurricane Center it is expected to make landfall along the western coast of Mexico likely tomorrow morning and then it is torn apart thanks to the elevated terrain and the mountains over portions of Mexico, but still notice this yellow and orange color that is upper level moisture from Rosalyn that will filter into South Central Texas. We will try to use that to make some scattered rain and thunderstorms. It's not going to be for everybody here Monday and into Monday night, but we will monitor for some pockets of heavy rainfall for those that are able to tap into the activity. And also it is worth mentioning that we do have a very low end risk to maybe find an isolated strong to severe storm, especially Monday night. Biggest thing there, some gusty winds. But of course, we'll continue to keep eyes on it. After that, we see low humidity work its way in. It will be pretty windy on Tuesday, and then temperatures take a little bit of a cooler hit there as well. A lot of stuff coming our way. Thank you, Mia. All right, Larry, the Roadrunners hang on to win a wild one today. Yeah, after the game, head coach Jeff Trailers said healthy teams don't win championships. Tough teams win championships, and they are tough, he said. UTSA and UNT went down to the fourth quarter where five total touchdowns were scored, plus the Texas Longhorns are not very happy about how their game ended today. Coming up. Place in Conference USA it was on the line today at the Alamo Dome between UTSA and North Texas. 27,000 plus were there. 
Fourth quarter, Brendan Brady scores from one yard out, and the Roadrunners lead 17-13, one of two TD runs for Brady. Ensuing drive, the mean green bounce back. Austin Ani throws it to Varkey's gums. He runs over a defender and races in for a 44-yard touchdown, and UNT goes up 20-17. Ah, but UTSA responds. Frank Harris rolling out, finds Joshua Cephas in the end zone, six yards, and the Roadrunners go ahead 24-20 with 2.36 left in the game. UNT would go ahead 27-24 with a buck 38 left, setting up a very wild finish. Roadrunners ball. 35 seconds left. Harris throws the tight end Oscar Cardenas for an amazing one-handed catch for 33 yards to UNT's 10. Oscar is clutch. Next play, Harris lobs it high for DeCorian. Clark in the end zone for the go-ahead touchdown with 15 seconds to go. UTSA would recover the onside kick, and the Roadrunners win 31-27, taking over first in CUSA while becoming bowl eligible. I guess Oscar got tired of y'all talking about the UAB being the greatest catch of all time, so he just decided to one-up y'all. How about that, kid? And, uh, again, what was cool tonight, Frank didn't play his best game, but, man, he's, he's the heart and soul of our team. 2-1-0, right? Shirts Clemens. Brendan Brady, best game he's played. Cibolo. My man Oscar, right from the city. I mean, it's, it's, it's a great story. It's, it means a lot to us. Um, Bo eligible. Um, just going out there executing, you know, we're both at the top of the conference. And, uh, you know, heading into the bye week definitely means a lot for us. So definitely going to learn from this, keep growing, and there's still a lot of football left. Here's Roadrunner safety Rashad Wisdom with his left arm in a sling that he hurt last week. Tonight he tweeted he's having shoulder surgery and he's out for the rest of the season, but will return for his super senior season. UIW back at home this afternoon hosting Faulkner University. First Cardinals possession facing a third and 19 on their own 34 yard line. Quarterback Lindsey Scott Jr. goes deep for Darren Chafin. Wide open for a 66 yard touchdown. Cardinals lead 7 to nothing and they crush the Eagles 70 to 0. Trinity at home this afternoon hosting Barry College. First quarter Vikings facing third and six at their own 10. And the Tigers defense comes through. Harris Good gets the sack. Loss of one on the play and Barry forced a punt. Next Trinity possession. They march down the field. Justin Carmouche takes off for the far sideline and outraces the defense for a 28-yard touchdown. Extra point was good for a 7-0 lead, and Tigers go on to win it 21-14, improving to 7-0. In other local scores, TLU won at McMurray 17-10, and Texas State fell to Southern Miss 20-14. All right, filled with a new level of confidence, number 20 Texas played at number 11 Oklahoma State today. Second quarter, handoff goes to Rashawn Johnson. He runs right up the A gap, hits the second level, and he wins that foot race. 52 yards as Texas pads its lead, 31 17 with 343 left in the first half. But they only scored three points the rest of the way, allowing the Cowboys to come back. Fourth quarter, tied at 34. Spencer Sanders finds Bryson Green for the catch. Deshaun Jameson is there, but Green breaks free of him and scores the final points of the game. Oklahoma State survives UT 41 to 34. Kansas at Baylor, where true freshman running back Richard Reese had a huge game. First quarter, he runs right and finds the end zone for a 14-yard touchdown and a 14-0 Bears lead. He rushed for 186 yards and two touchdowns, and Baylor wins it 35-23, snapping a two-game slide. West Virginia, Texas Tech, Red Raiders running back. Taj Brooks shows off his speed on this 19-yard touchdown run right up the middle. And Tech strikes first in the first seven to nothing. He had 17 carries for 107 yards and two touchdowns. And Tech goes on to win this one 48 to 10. And in a battle of two top 20 teams between Kansas State and TCU, the Horned Frogs just won at 38 28 to remain undefeated and take over first place in the Big 12. Coming up later in sports, we've got Spurs, Astros, and big game coverage on a very, very busy Saturday. Thank you, Larry. We'll be right back. People living in Gray Forest, along with some local activists, are concerned about a new subdivision set to be built on the far northwest side. The developer submitted an application to the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality to pump treated wastewater into the Holotus Creek. Camille Juarez now tells us what that means for the people who live in that area and for the drinking water of everyone in San Antonio. This was the Holotus Creek last year. Randy Newman, a Gray Forest resident of 40 years, knows its charm. Probably some of the happiest memories I have are as a child swimming in this pristine water. 
people living in Gray Forest worry their swimming hole could be history if developer Lennar builds 3,000 homes. Lennar sent a permit application to the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality to build their own wastewater treatment center and pump up to a million gallons of treated wastewater a day into Holotus Creek. And it's, uh, we just can't trust that it's going to really get all of the chemicals, all the pharmaceutical products out. That water will run on top of the land and make its way down into the Edwards Aquifer. The Southwest Research Institute did a study on the Holotus Creek in 2020. They found that any wastewater disposal in the Holotus Creek could negatively impact the Edwards Aquifer. The Greater Edwards Aquifer Alliance agrees. We're raising a lot more environmental concerns when it comes towards, you know, recharge rates, pollution entering into our recharge zone and especially for Edwards Aquifer. Annalisa with the Greater Edwards Aquifer Alliance says the organization has contested the application to TCEQ because the long term buildup of treated wastewater in our aquifer could be expensive to reverse. It would cost SAWS ratepayers in the billions of dollars to pretreat that water before it's distributed. Appraisal documents show the land has not yet been purchased by Lennar. When asked for comment, Lennar declined. You do it for one developer and then you'll start doing it for everybody. And before you know it, you have irreversible damage to the water system. Camelia Juarez, Kisa 12 News. Some kids got the chance to learn the art of fishing today from some true experts. Take a look. The Brackenridge Park Conservancy hosted several free fishing classes put on by members of the Texas Parks and Wildlife, as well as the Finn Addict Angler Foundation. On Friday, Parks and Wildlife stocked the river with some 600 native catfish for today's event. The kids were given fishing poles and then the experts were taught the proper techniques and etiquette needed to be an effective fisherman. Besides learning how to fish, the clinic served as a way for families to connect and get out there and enjoy the great outdoors. Well, you know, all our kids, you know, we, we struggle with so many, so many issues these days, mental health, all these kinds of issues. And what's better than being in the beautiful outdoors like it is today, enjoying nature? And if you happen to catch a fish, that even makes it a better day. And those that were lucky enough to catch a fish were able to take it home with them. And it was a howling good time happening at the Barbie Cutie Smokehouse over on the northwest side today. The restaurant hosting its second annual Halloween celebration. The family friendly event included a face painting and pumpkin decorating station, bouncy houses and of course a dog costume contest. Organizers say they put on the celebration to ensure the whole family, including the four legged friends, can enjoy Halloween. We realized that there was a lot of different Halloween events, but it wasn't always inclusive of everybody, including your dog members. So we wanted to make something that wasn't super scary um, and could also bring the community together in a fun way. Now, if you missed out on today's event, they are already making plans for a Christmas themed dog friendly holiday event. So look forward to that. And you want to look forward to this, too. There's a reminder for you. Muertos Fest is next Saturday, October 29th. And on Sunday, the 30th, if you don't make it to the festival, you can watch it all during our primetime special on Sunday evening from 8 to 10. That's on KSAT, on KSAT.com, and, of course, on KSAT+. Plus. Still ahead on the night beat tonight, dirty hands, fixing food, and flying insects, tasting the food before customers, where health inspectors found these violations and more behind the kitchen door next. A popular Mexican restaurant with a list of health violations nearly as long as their menu. An Asian restaurant forced to toss out spoiled food and a Fred's fish fry deals with repeat violations and they need to make some repairs. These are just a few of the problems health inspectors found when they went behind the kitchen door. Julio's Mexican restaurant in the 2000 block of McCulley Drive comes in with a 76. The ice machine was heavily soiled with black mold-like residue. There were flying pests in the kitchen and packaged meats were being thawed in buckets instead of under running water or in the fridge. Employees were seen using a knife to cut and slice an avocado. Then they put the knife away without washing it. Other employees were preparing ready-to-eat foods with bare hands and no hand washing. Another grabbed a jar of mayonnaise from a cooler, then prepared food with her bare hands. The inspector noted the door and handle of that cooler 
was not clean and was sticky with food. Three more violations were cited as warnings. A reinspection was ordered. <laughs> Quick Walk in the 500 block of Enrique Barrera Parkway got an 81 on their recent inspection. They had a problem with their cold hold unit being too warm. Foods inside were at a temperature of 48 to 50 degrees when they should be 41 or below. The prepared foods kept overnight in a refrigerator were not safe for eating and were discarded. Some food equipment was caked with food debris and the microwave was dirty. Three of the violations were repeats while employees corrected seven violations during their inspection. Fred's Fish Fry in the 1100 block of Couples earned a respectable 85, but five of their violations were repeats. There were drain flies seen near a sink and under that sink there was a container with stagnant water. The walk-in cooler had dark debris buildup on it and around it. One toilet wasn't working, the other had dark mold-like debris inside the bowl. Several plumbing fixtures needed to be fixed and a section of wall was missing. Repairs were ordered and so was a reinspection. That's what's going on behind the kitchen door. Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. All right, let's take another look outside over the Alamo City here this Saturday night with our live cam. Again, we are pretty quiet in terms of any rain or anything. We were dry out there today. It was plenty breezy, though. That breeze still with us in some spots late tonight. And what that is doing is filtering in more of that humidity. So you can already see as we take a look at those dew points, 60s here in San Antonio in that muggy range pointing farther off to the south. We will continue to see that humidity build over the next 24 to 48 hours as we head into your Sunday. Still plenty windy out there as well with some additional wind gusts upwards of 25 to 30 miles per hour. We'll start off in the 60s here in San Antonio. I think you will notice more of that humidity tomorrow. Mostly cloudy skies, temperatures climbing into the 80s for those afternoon highs. So that takes care of the back half of the weekend's plans. Still monitoring an early week rain chance Monday and into Monday night as we see our next cool front move through. We'll have another full check of that forecast here in just a few. Got our first real taste of fall this week and it lasted several days and then today it all just psh, kind of disappeared. Exactly. It was warmer than average. The moisture is moving back in, so it was a little bit more humid and noticeably breezier than what we've seen over the past few days as well. That doesn't just affect our morning lows, but also our afternoon highs. Take a look at the highs out there found earlier this afternoon. 86 officially here in San Antonio. That's about six degrees warmer than the average of 80 degrees for this time of year. It was 87 out in Hondo, 84 in Kerrville, 89, just shy of 90 degrees out in Pleasanton in Atascosa County. So as we head into the overnight hours, it is going to be another warmer than average start to the back half of the weekend's plans. By wake up time Sunday in the San Antonio Metro, we're in the 60s, around 66 officially here in town, 62 up in Bernie, 62 as well over in Bandera, 66 in Hondo, and 66 in Divine. Mostly cloudy skies, expect did for most. I do think we will find a few more peaks of sunshine, especially into the afternoon hours, helping those temperatures once again warm. Pretty similar to what we found out there earlier today. We've got that forecast high pointed officially around 86 here in San Antonio, 84 up in Bulverde, 89 in Floresville, and 88 out in Castroville in Medina County. So that really is the theme as we head into our Sunday near about 80 by lunchtime and it still will be plenty breezy out there. Some additional wind gusts upwards of 25 to 30 miles per hour will be possible to wrap up the weekend's plans and while coverage is expected to be pretty low, still going to hold on to about a 10 to 20 percent chance to maybe find an isolated shower or two, especially along and west of the I-35 corridor. So just something we will continue to monitor, but notice as we take a look here across South Texas tonight, we are quiet out there. We've got an area of high pressure in the upper levels of the 
atmosphere off to our south, an area of low pressure just off the east coast. Some rain there near the eastern seaboard as well. But take a look across the Pacific Northwest. There's a dip in the jet stream, an area of low pressure that is actually sparking some snow and rain across the Pacific Northwest headed to the Rockies. You can see here tonight a mixture of winter storm warnings, winter weather advisories, hard freeze warnings, as well as freeze warnings in place. Look at these temperatures. It's freezing up at Cut, Cut Bank, Montana, 44 in Boise, Idaho, 41 in Salt Lake City, just shy of 60 degrees in Casper, Wyoming. That area of low pressure is going to continue pushing eastward here over the next 24 to 48 hours. And we're actually going to see that move into parts of the Lone Star State as we head into the first day of the upcoming work week for our Monday. So that does send some additional energy into our atmosphere. Combine that with our next front, the Gulf moisture in place, and of course the upper level moisture streaming in from Hurricane Rosalind. And that's why we do have a chance for some scattered rain, a couple of thunderstorms Monday and into Monday night. It's not going to be for everybody with both of those rounds. Still probably a good idea to take the umbrella with you if you are stepping out for the Monday morning drive. We will monitor for an isolated strong to maybe briefly severe storm Monday night. The biggest thing to monitor there. Some isolated instances of some strong gusty winds. As of right now, rainfall totals for those that do look to pick up on some of the activity. Generally a few tenths of an inch to half of an inch at best. Of course, we will continue to fine tune the details over the next 48 hours. And then after that, more wind on Tuesday. Low humidity though, and then sunshine returns into midweek. Gonna need that weather app this week to keep track of all those changes. Yes. Thank you, Mia. All right, Larry, the Spurs have now won two games on the road. Oh, I need to be Where are we here, going? Here. I don't know. Like, Where are we cameras? going? What are we doing? Yes, two games on the road. They're 2-1 and one to start off the young season. I'm sure some Spurs are not happy about that because they want them to eventually get the number one pick. But come on, you got to give some of these young kids a chance to win. Dougie McBuckets, one of the two 30-year-olds, was on fire for the Spurs tonight. And we've got a big game coverage Saturday night edition Coming up. Our big game coverage for Saturday night kicks off at Alamo Stadium. Number four, Alamo Heights taking on Edison. Mule strike first early in the first quarter. Conley McKenna throws it up for Rhett Anderson, who makes the grab for a 17-yard touchdown. 7-0 Heights. Next offensive possession. This time McKenna keeps it himself, breaks the tackle, and rumbles into the end zone for the 16-yard score. 14-0 Mules, and they cruise to a big win, 69-7. The Husky Band is doing the Macarena at the Gus tonight. Holmes playing number six tapped. Raiders march down the field. Johnny Lott dumps it off to Jaden Aliman and he races on touch down the sideline for a 43 yard touchdown at seven nothing Raiders Huskies answer back Christopher Geller caps the ensuing drive with a one yard touchdown run on fourth and goal that makes it a seven to six game and Taft gets the dub 65 to 18 say hello to the Johnson cheerleaders over at Ferris Stadium Jaguars facing Marshall Johnson jumps out to an early lead Lauren Johnson takes the handoff right up the middle throws a stiff arm steps out of a tackle stays on his feet and he is gone for the 58 yard touchdown and a 6-0 lead in the final from Ferris. Johnson wins 41-20. to Two local teams punch their tickets to the first UIL Water Polo State Tournament this afternoon at Southwest ISD Aquatic Center. The Brandeis Broncos overcame a five-goal deficit in the fourth quarter to defeat Brennan 23-14 in overtime. And Bernie Champion knocked off Clark in a hard-fought boys regional final 16-13. You can watch full recaps of both games on the BGC page at ksat.com later tonight. Following their bye week, Texas A&M got back to business tonight at South Carolina where the Gamecocks jumped out to a 17-0 league. Al Aggie's trying to rally. Haynes King takes a snap, slips, stays on his feet, then connects to Max Wright who stretches the ball over the goal line and the Aggies trailed 17-14 after a successful two-point conversion. Early fourth now, King running to avoid pressure. He throws the ball and then comes up lame, holding his right shoulder area. Not sure what happened. So true freshman five-star QB Connor Wigman replaced King. He could not rally them back, and the Aggies fall 30 to 24.
Time to play ball. Houston at New York for game three of the American League Championship Series. Top of the second inning. Chaz McCormick hits a two run homer to right field off of Garrett Cole. And the Strohs lead 2 0. That at bat was made possible by a two out error on the Yankees, the batter before him. Astros win 5 0, taking a commanding three zip series lead, and they'll go for the sweep tomorrow at 6 07 p.m. The NBA, the Spurs' first road trip of the season, is off to a great start. After beating Indiana last night, they won at Philly tonight. Late third quarter, Doug McDermott makes back-to-back three-pointers to help the Spurs maintain a 10-point lead, and he's not done. Fourth quarter, he goes three ball again to put the Spurs up for good, 90-88. to McBuckets with a huge 14 points off the bench. Devin Vassell led the way with 22 points, and the Spurs beat the Sixers 114-105, to improving to 2-1. We knew that they were going to be aggressive, and we knew that we were going to take that first punch, and we knew that we wanted to deliver the first punch. And I think that was a good thing that we've done the past two games. I think the first game, you know, Charlotte came out, and they punched us in the mouth, and it was hard for us to get back. So uh, we're just trying to come out and compete early and make sure that we're the first team hitting them in the mouth. Spurs will continue their road trip Monday night at 7 at the Timberwolves. I like these young kids. They got yep. some fight. Yep. Oh, jeez, I'm over here. We're back now. here to the box now. <laughs> we'll be back. <laughs> Ever feel like slapping someone? Looks like fun, doesn't it? A growing underground sport has been finding popularity the last few years on social media. Now fans will be able to watch slap fighting in person. The Nevada State Athletic Commission unanimously approved to allow sanctioned slap fights in the state. And spectators may even be able to be part of the sport. According to Nevada rules, an event can typically be wagered on as long as it meets the general criteria set forth in regulations. That means it's up to the licensed sports books looking at permitting wagers. This type of competition falls under the rules. The first slap fights in Vegas could happen before the end of the year. Get slapping. Seems interesting. Yeah, for sure. All right, breezy tomorrow. Chance for some scattered rain. Not for everyone. Monday and Monday night with our next front. And then more sunshine. Another breezy wind on Tuesday. And temperatures in the 70s. That's slaptastic. <laughs> That's all the time we have tonight. We'll see you back here tomorrow starting at 530. Thanks for staying up late with us.